We now come to the maiden speech of Richard Ford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for calling me to speak. Uh, and, and I've worked in the past with the, the Conflict, Stability and Security Fund, and so I know just how important it is that uh, international development funding of the sort we're discussing today is, is used well by the UK. I must admit, in, in this new job of mine, I'm still learning my way around the, the maze of corridors, anterooms and stairways, and, and only once so far have I ended up in the scullery. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Tiverton and Honiton constituency, which I'm very fortunate to, to represent, is made up of several significant towns, um, also Axminster, Seaton, Columpton, uh, Colleton, which, which brands itself a rebel town, um, and, and, and nearly 100 villages. It stretches from the fringes of, of Exmoor at Bankton to the Jurassic Coast at Branscombe. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hosting you, Mr. Speaker, uh, at Honiton later this month, where we will get to go to the All Hallows Museum and, and see the, uh, the, the, the Honiton lace that, uh, that yeah, yeah. the ceremonial robe is made of. I'd like to pay tribute to two of my predecessors as MP for the part of Devon that I'm going to do my very best to represent. One was an MP who took up office in 2010, and the other first came to this place as MP for Tiverton in 1835. They were Neil Parrish and Lord Palmerston. In his maiden speech made over, over a decade ago, Neil Parrish said that he wanted to see fairer funding for schools. I know that he tried in earnest to, to seek that uh, additional funding for schools, but we are still waiting for action on this. And I'm thinking here specifically about Tiverton High School, yeah. where I was pleased to see that the Right Honourable Gentleman, the former Secretary of State for Education, <laughs> tweeted after the by-election that he had <laughs> heard local concerns about Tiverton High School. But now that he is Chancellor of the Exchequer, yeah, yeah. he should know <laughs> that my constituents are still looking for action rather than tweets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Neil Parrish was a strong voice for farmers, not just those in Devon, but for farmers across the country. He led a rebellion of Conservative MPs on the government's agriculture bill, and he aimed to prohibit the import of food produced to lower animal health standards to, and to lower welfare standards than those that we use in the UK. Farmers in Devon and elsewhere are struggling to deal with the rising price of fuel, of feed and of, of fertiliser. I pledge to continue to work with bodies like the National Farmers Union to stand up for farmers and ensure that they have a champion here in Westminster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I walk up the staircase to my office here, I find myself being eyeballed. I'm, I'm eyeballed by a bust of the former Foreign Secretary and former Prime Minister, Lord Palmerston. Palmerston was the MP for Tiverton for 30 years. And he went on a journey, a, a journey experienced by some of my constituents, well, a few of my constituents, just recently at last month's by-election. He started out a Conservative, but later became a Liberal. <laughs> And honestly, this is, I think, what we're hearing across the country, a, a grand swell of opinion from people who feel taken for granted. Just yesterday, we, we saw two senior members of the Cabinet uh, quit, citing a, a lack of integrity. And I think it's now time for those remaining members of the Cabinet to heed the message from voters in Tiverton and Honiton at our by-election last month and, and show the Prime Minister the door. Yeah. Lord Palmerston was also Prime Minister. He was... Prime Minister at the end of the Crimean War. He spoke in this place about Russian foreign policy 160 years ago. He said that the practice of the Russian government has always been to push forward its encroachments as far and as fast as the apathy or want of firmness of other governments would allow, but always to stop and retire when it met with decided resistance and then to wait for the next available opportunity. I'm much less fatalistic about Russia's expansionist ways. With a different leader at a different time, I don't suppose that Russia would be bound to invade its neighbour. But the UK is right to support Ukraine, and for many reasons. For me, the most important of those reasons relates to the way that Ukraine 
gave up its status as a country in possession of nuclear weapons. And it did that in part because of the assurances that it received at the time from countries including the UK as part of the Budapest Memorandum. Under that memorandum, we offered assurances to Ukraine in relation to its security. And, and while those, those were not security guarantees, I see that the support that the UK is showing to Ukraine is consistent with what we pledged back in 1994. I suggest that the UK should show the same solidarity and the same ability to work with European neighbours that Britain showed during the Crimean War. Liberal democracy must be defended and preserved regardless of who Palmerston's latest successor might be. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.